Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I'm back with a video about the books that I'm most excited about right now slash five star predictions. I say right now because as I'm filming this it's Saturday and it could change by tomorrow because tastes change every day with books I find, I don't know if you feel the same. Anyway, I have been inspired after seeing some fabulous people doing the five star predictions video which Mercedes started I think a few years ago but recently the lovely Renee who's back from booktube after having a break I'll link his channel down below along with all these other channels as well actually um as long um as long as no as long as you go and check them out as well as the wonderful Grace over at GK Reads I've seen Sarah at Your True Shelf do it I've seen Lauren of Lauren the Books do it and also most recently I have seen Russell at Ink and Paper blog do it and I love these videos because it's people getting really excited about books they've got ahead of them and reading they've got ahead and I just love that it is I was going to say infectious but that's not the best word to use right now I'll say contagious or is that just the same but the enthusiasm just kind of oh I don't know I just I, I love it and I've kind of needed it recently because I'm not going to lie I'm a little bit book slumpy at the moment I haven't been able to do as much reading as I would like recently because currently with my day job I'm traveling loads not getting that much time to read because I'm kind of doing 12 hour days and when I'm on the train I'm trying to catch up with admin and I'm doing all the training that we're doing with lives at the moment I can't do my admin it's now to catch up and blah 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 it's just a lot going on which is also why I am not having a break from booktube but I'm going to probably be around less frequently but it's still definitely around it's just going to be more of a case of a delightful i'll see you when i see you so i have these books and actually the other thing that started me wanting to do um this sort of video anyway was i was thinking about what i need to pack for the next week and what books i really want to read while i've just got a bit of time at home and so i picked up bitter by a quakey amese which is one of my most anticipated books of this year it came out a while back the story of my life that oh a book that i really really want to read and then i don't because i get so nervous with books i'm excited for that I tend to put them off. Interestingly, also, when I create a list of books that I feel I should read or really want to read imminently, the moment I've done it, I change my mind because I am a contrary Mary or contrary fairy, whichever one you want to call me. But in here and on my top is some lovely merch that I've got that I just wanted to mention. But um, you can see in my book, I've got this gorgeous I'm a friend of Sonny's bookmark, which I love. And I am wearing a Sonny's book truck sweatshirt. I don't get those words mixed up. Sonny's book truck uh, is a wonderful, wonderful initiative by the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful CJ Reads, and I really wanted to support it, and so I've got it. I'll link CJ's channel down below, and you can find out more. I'll also link the Instagram to Sunny's Book Truck if you want to get involved. There's book clubs and all that stuff going on. And speaking of Instagram and support, I've had quite a few people asking me how they can support like my channel or or my content, I guess. And one of the things is if you want to be a patron, be a patron. If you do, if you want to do it though without any money involved simply like like the videos by your um, content creators that you love and comment on them that really helps and that applies sorry to YouTube and to Instagram so just get liking and commenting and I need to do it more too I'm holding myself accountable to it anyway I've talked for nearly four minutes and I only held up one book so let's get cracking with these 10 books that I'm most excited about and I really really hope will be five star books because like I said, my reading is a bit slumpy with all the travel that I'm doing. I miss, I, I, when I don't read very much or I'm, you know, not lost in a really good book, I get really, really cranky, although I was gonna say, I also get really cranky when I'm lost in a good book and I have to do anything else. But when I'm not reading regularly, it does make me really cranky because it's really, really good for my mental health. Anyway, 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 let's get on with the books right now. So first up, and I'm probably going to go off on lots of tangents and do a lot of cheating. Um, but first up, I have The Night Ship by Jess Kidd. This is out in August. Jess Kidd is a favourite author of mine. And there are lots of other favourite authors who have books coming out that I could have mentioned. For example, I can't speak. Blah, 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 blah. For example, Kieran Maud Hargrave, Maggie O'Farrell. I could go on. There's loads. This one is one that I want to head to pretty soon. It's historical fiction, which Jess does brilliantly. I assume there's going to be something supernatural going on because she does supernatural elements to her fiction brilliantly. She also writes with a real comedy, and this is set in 1629 when a young girl goes onto a boat to try and find out what's happened to her father and go and find him. And then it's set in 1989 when I think it's a young boy, um, 
is orphaned and has to go and live with his grandfather and it's how those two stories interlink so i love that as a format i love it when there's two different timelines i, th I always think it's really hard for writers to make them both as appealing as each other because sometimes you like one more than the other then we have an absolute chunkster of a book we have tomb of sand or tome of sand as it could be called uh, which is by Geetanjali Shri, translated by Daisy Rockwell, which is up for the Booker International, which I've been really, really excited about the long list and short list for this year. There are other prize books that I'm really, really excited for. Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead and Saran Bliss on the Women's Prize. I also really want to read Eleanor Knows. I also really want to read uh, Love in the Big City from the International uh, Booker Prize. So yeah, there's loads. I just feel like this one, I think... So I don't read big books that often, but when I do and I love them, they can end up being my absolute favourites because you can just languish in them and get completely lost in them. I've heard this sort of shape shifts a little bit as it goes on, but I've heard you get really, really lost in it. It's about a woman who slips into depression after um, the death of her husband and it's kind of how she comes out of it. I haven't read too much into it because there's a thing with books as well. When I'm super excited about them, I don't want to know too much in case it puts me off. Is that weird? Is that the same for all of you? I'm also quite in the mood for some big, chunky books, uh, which will come up with another one that I'm um, excited for and I think uh, could be a five-star book. But next, polar opposite, I've got some short stories. This is Rainbow Rainbow by Lydia Conklin. Now, I can't remember where I first saw this collection. I think it might have been on what Sarah read next on Instagram. And I'm sure she was raving about it. And I was like, oh, I really need to get it. And it wasn't available here. But the publishers have very kindly sent me a very early proof. This is out in June now. I say early proof, I got it earlier this year. Simon, you are dreadful. This is Queer Queer Short Stories. And after reading Sarah Land earlier this year, funny enough, recommended by CJ Reads. It was that book that made me want to read more queer queer short stories so they're all queer as in dealing with the lgbtqia plus community but at the same time they're just queer because they're a bit odd and otherly and that to me is just the ticket so very very excited for this some other queer books that i'm really really keen to read are in fact i've got them here i'll show you them see i told you i was going to cheat i've got these ones which are solo dance by lee katomi we've got uh arinze if I can do's, God's children are little broken things and also an exciting and vivid inner life by Paul Della Rossa. I think those all might be short story collections possibly, or I think maybe that one's a novel. Anyway, I already cheated. Pretend they weren't part of the 10, but I did say I was going to cheat and go off on tangents and stuff, and I have. I also really would like to read Young Mungo at some point. I think all of the buzz and hype has put me off slightly, but I think once that dies down a little bit, then I will head to it, because I absolutely love Chuggy Bane. And then part of me also thinks, Simon, don't be so silly, like, what's going on? You shouldn't put books up. I've just suddenly thought of another author that I'm really excited for, Jesse Burton's next book, which is the um, sequel to The Miniaturist, and it's called The Fortune House, and it's just, or The House of Fortune, either, even, because I can see it. It's just over there. You can't see my pointing finger. It's going over there. Anyway, this book is probably one of the ones that's highest up on my most keen to read right now. And it's because I keep seeing it advertised on Instagram. It's a book that I know that Jen really loved. It's Mrs. March. I think it might have been Jen's book of the year last year, was it possibly? By Virginia Fito. And this has been described as being a little bit like a, a Tessa, I love Robert, but mm, that. Described as being a little bit like a Tessa Moshveg, who actually, Lapona, Laponva, that, that's another book that I'd really, really like to read, but I've read it before, so that kind of falls in the category I was talking about earlier. Wow, there's so many books I want to read, but this is good because I am slumpy and a little bit read funky at the moment. I'm in a bit of a slump and a funk and not in a good way. This is kind of getting me all, ooh, which these five star predictions videos do that I've been watching. See, it's all good stuff. It's like therapy, this channel quite often. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Anyway, this is one of quite a few books, actually, I want to read about with quite um, edgy slash difficult slash different female protagonist. There's also Woman Eating that I'm really, really keen to get to by, it's just over there, Claire Coda, A Certain Hunger by Chelsea Summers I really, really want to get to. There are more. This one I think is about a woman whose husband is writing a book and writes a not great character that's clearly very much inspired by her. And then it's sort of how, I think it's sort of a literary emotional, psych something, psych not psychotic, not psychotherapy, uh, sociopathic? I don't know. Thrillery kind of thing. Almost like, is narrative thriller 
Is that what we could call this? Is that a whole new genre? I don't know, maybe, let me know. Wow, this video. This is why I'm taking a break every so often because I feel like when I'm tired, I don't make very much sense, but maybe you prefer this version of me, rambling, slightly rogue, and uh, yeah, anyway. I have just got a feeling, this book sounds like it's gonna be quite quiet and quite delicate, but very emotional and probably with sort of gives you a bit of emotional whiplash is what I wanna say. It's at certain points we touch by Lauren John Joseph. And I've been really, really keen to read this for ages as well. One thing that's put me off reading this is that it's in hardback and it's lovely. And because I'm traveling so much, books tend to just get sort of shoved in and bash other bits of luggage and stuff and that just makes me feel a little bit queasy. So um, if I had a proof of this, I'd definitely be reading this much sooner, but definitely like, I want to get this done preferably before the middle of the year, because of course, when it hits July, I'm gonna be doing my books of the year so far. And I think that's one of the reasons that I wanted to do. And I haven't mentioned this because I'm a fool. I said I was doing must read May, and then I feel like I put a curse on my reading because I've not read much May, frankly. Because I know that the middle of the year's coming, I wanna kind of talk about all the books that I've loved so far this year. I wanna actually head to some, and I have been saying I wanna read more by whim, as I kind of film by whim too. So yeah, anyway, but this I'm very excited for. It's a about, uh, I think our protagonist is walking through the streets of possibly Soho early one morning. It's February the 29th, which is a leap year day and also um, a previous lover's birthday. And I think we go back to that relationship, which was actually really quite toxic and look into that and it gets dark as it goes on. Like I said, I think it's gonna give you a bit of an emotional whiplash. Then we have some non-fiction. And I think this is probably gonna make me cry, but apparently it's also really hopeful, but it just sounds fantastic. And also I love, what they have done with this book. Um, this is called, oops, sorry. Um, this is called, This Is Not A Pity Memoir by Abby Morgan. And um, it's got a quote from Meryl Streep on the cover. Abby Morgan, I can't speak today. What a day to choose to film on a day that you can't speak properly. Well done, Simon. I'm just a little mumbly and muttery. <gasps> anyway, honestly, that aside ruined what I was going to do with this reveal. This is not a pity memoir. And on the inside, it says it's a love story. And this is a memoir uh, about Abby and her husband. And her husband becomes really ill and goes into a coma. And when he wakes up, he can't remember who she is, or he doesn't believe that she is his wife and it's what follows on from there and how she has to rebuild this relationship. I originally heard about it from Lorraine Candy, who is one of the Women's Prize judges this year. She does these really great videos on Instagram where she sort of recommends a few books every Friday. And yeah, I, I thought that sounded amazing. So I fell into Waterstones promptly after I had seen that video. So yeah, really, really excited for this one, a recent purchase. I have not even hauled that one yet. <gasps> Imagine. I have not read much historical fiction this year and I have had a few requests like, where are all your historical fiction reviews? And I'm like, well, if I'm not reading it, I can't really read it. I also had a very odd comment recently where I was asked if I could please recommend books that men might enjoy. Hmm, let's all think about that for a moment. Hmm. Anyway, this is Joan by Catherine J. Chen, and I'm very, very, very excited about this, um, as it is the story of Joan of Arc. And I find Joan of Arc a fascinating character. I don't feel like I know enough about her in um, historical terms. Um, I know that uh, both Madonna and Little Mix have made songs about her, which means that she's key. Um, I am being slightly tongue-in-cheek when I say that, though I love Little Mix and Madonna. Anyway, that, can we not talk about Little Mix? They're, they're no more. Move on. Back to Joan. The other reason I'm really excited about this is I saw the lovely Anna, whose channel I adore and I will link down below. You have to watch her, she just makes me howl. And hopefully I'm gonna be meeting up with her in New York when I go later this year. She had read a book about Joan of Arc and done some sort of, it was the book that sent, it's the sort of book, and I'm hoping this is the same, that sends you off almost Googling to find out more. And uh, the stuff that she found out was amazing and that made me more excited for this. I also think that is such a brilliant cover. Um, yeah, it's really, really great. A uh, designer called Holly has done this. He's also recently done the new Women's Prize tote bags, which look gorgeous. Actually on the back, Hilary Mantella said, it's as if the author has crept inside a statue and breathed a soul into it, recreating Joan of Arc as a woman for our time. That's a good quote, that. Um, so yeah, hopefully more historical fiction. Now, I did think this next book was historical fiction, 
but it's not. It's about friendship. And I love, there's a quote in here that says, every decent friendship comes with a drop of hatred, but that hatred is like honey in the tea. It makes it addictive. And this is When We Lost Our Heads by Heather O'Neill, another book that I would love to pick up right now, but I don't want to be traveling around and carting it about because I don't want to damage it because it's so gorgeous. Even though I would take the dust jacket off, which my mum finds really odd, but you know, you want to keep the dust jacket in good order, more so than necessarily the cover of the book. Blah, 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 Sam, what's it about? Marie Antoinette, who, or is it Marie Antoine? Marie Antoine, and I thought because of the cover of it was actually about Marie Antoinette, hence why I thought it was a historical novel. It's not, it's about her. She's um, the daughter of one of the richest families in Montreal, and it's how she makes this sort of frenemy relationship with another woman, and how this friendship sort of spirals out of control and becomes quite dangerous. I think it's gonna be fascinating. I loved The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. I have meant to read all of her books ever since I read that. I have read no more, but this came out. I saw it, I wanted it. I got it, I ordered it from America because I was that keen to get to it. I don't know when it's coming out in the UK or if it's coming out in the UK yet. And ultimately, um, and actually the last of the sort of new releases, I guess, which is what I sort of have focused on, or recent releases at least, um, we have Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow. Now, I find books about friendship really fascinating. And I was thinking actually, as I'm going through, all of these could be sort of themed videos, couldn't they? Because I could do ones on some of like my favourite authors, new books uh, with like Jess Kidd, etc. Jesse Burton, and Mike Farrell, blah, blah, blah. I could do one on prize books, like I could do one. I am planning on even doing one with the Women's Prize shortlisted books that I've not read yet. Um, I could do one on books about friendship. I could do one on books about, um, what were the other themes? Oh, um, unusual slash difficult slash quirky slash see the word complex slash and uh, different did I say different difficult anyway female protagonist and what's it on historical so there's loads I could do potentially anyway I am really waffling I'm on the waffle train to waffle town <sighs> let's go to Memphis this like I said I've heard it's about um friendship and also about family and it's done in a really short um compelling brilliant way and there's just I don't know what it is it's a, a mystery of life, one of life's great mysteries. But you know when sometimes you just see a book and you get a vibe about it and you just think, that could be one of my favourite books. That's how I feel about this. And then I get scared to read it. What a silly sausage Simon is. And then last but not least, and this is a book that, going back to Renee, I saw he mentioned in his Five Star Predictions video and he um, really wants to read. And Renee, if you see this and you want to buddy read it, let me know. But also, going back to um, the videos that inspired this, uh, is a book that the lovely Russell of Ink and Paper got me for one of my birthdays a few years ago now, I think even pre-pandemic, and I've still not got to it yet. It's Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. And inside, it's even got a happy birthday dedication that Russell got for me, which was incredibly, incredibly, incredibly kind of him. I'm going to hold up the paperback I have, which may well go in my suitcase and, and head around the country with me over the next couple of weeks, along with this, actually. I might take Sunnies to Wales with me, along with Pachinko, although I would like to read some Welsh books while I'm in Wales. <gasps> oh, it's a conundrum, it's a quandary, and I don't want to overthink it because it will make me stressed and reading shouldn't do that. But it's difficult when you're packing your on the go because part of me is like, oh, stuff it, I won't pack any books and I'll just buy on the go. And I'm like, well, what if I don't find any books that I really, really like? Because that happened in a Waterstones last week and I shall say no more about that. I'll say more about Pachinko though, because that's what I was talking about. And that is that this is um, a book that follows one particular f Korean family, I think from the early 1900s onwards, and I believe is about how after, I think it's a, a woman's husband dies and her brother then introduces her to another husband and they move to Japan and it's what happens there. I've also seen this is now on Apple TV. I got a new TV the other day partly because I want to have Apple TV on it because I can't do mirroring all that tech stuff because I'm technically inept. It's amazing I'm doing this right now. I want to read it before I watch it. Speaking of adaptations and five-star books, have any of you seen The Essex Serpent yet? I'm still too nervous to watch it because I love that book so much. And even though I love Claire Danes, I'm not so bothered about Tom Wass's face, but um, even though I love Claire Danes, I'm just a bit nervous about it. Anyway, really, really, really keen to get to this. And so that is the final in both different covers of my books that I'm most excited about 
slash five star predictions even though there's shed loads of other books i'm excited about i mean i'm just looking around now i've spotted arsenic petite by robin stevens i've spotted um deli wed's destiny i mean i could go on black mamba by william friend that sounds like it's gonna be amazing horror book so really i think i've just massively cheated but you have helped me to get really excited about reading again because i have i don't know it's not that I've not been excited about reading, it's just that I've not had time to read and then it just makes me so frustrated. I need to sort of, yeah, get the balance back over the coming weeks because travel ain't going to be stopping until the end of October when I'm unemployed. I'm really, really, really excited about these books, so please, 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 in the comments don't... Please, please, please don't say you hated any of them in the comments down below. We can talk about that once I've read them, but I would love to hear what books you are most excited for at the moment? What is right at the top of your TBR? What are you lusting after that's gonna be released in the forthcoming weeks? Tell me below, because that might introduce me to some more books to get excited about, and then the excitement will just keep fizzing away, filling me with joy, and getting me back on that reading train, not the tangent or waffle train, but the reading train, and off we go. I will see you when I see you, well, I'll speak to you all soon. Hope you're, oh, I don't know what I was going to say then. Hope you're doing well. I do hope you're doing well. But I'll speak, I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.